So this is the Tokars Pluto, which is ostensibly just a rip-off of an Abloy Classic, and it does look that way, but it does have a couple of extra things going on. Firstly, it's got a random driving disc, so the zero disc, front disc free spins, the rear disc, it looks like a zero on the key, but uh, it's not, that actually does nothing, it's just free space. The zero, um, I guess, is actually this one or this one, it's got two zero discs that it drives off. So it's a random place zero disc, the other thing is that it's got this uh, rather strong spring, so everything's around at 90 degrees, in order to then open the lock you need to overcome that spring. Um, which is quite strong and I think it's there to either make it more convenient to close the locks you can just spring shut the lock or uh, it's there to make any tension or any tool that you use to drive the lock it has to be stronger than normal because it has to overcome that spring it also has the detrimental effects of accelerating wear upon the key so the actual zero driver discs are going to wear a lot quicker on this lock than they would on a normal disc detainer lock that doesn't have springs that's one of the main points of a disc detainer lock. They don't have springs, so they wear a lot better. Also, in very bad climates, having no springs means there's less things to go wrong and break. Anyway, picking this thing. It's a zero driver disc. So, ostensibly, we can't use a tool such as this, which is uh, my ablator. My ablator, sorry, get it right. Abloyator. Because this tensions from the rear, and there's nothing to tension from there, it just spins. I can tension from the rear disc still, but that wouldn't be a zero disc then. And then I would have to then find the actual, once everything felt like it was right, I would then have to find the actual driving disc with the tip. Drive the lock with the picking tip and then rotate the tensioner back around. Um, now that wouldn't work on a rear tension because you've got this arm, and when I rotate it back around, if it's more than a couple of cuts, I'm going to be resetting things. But more than that, overcoming that spring with just the picking tip is probably going to break my picking tip. Uh, ditto, if I use the front, it's got a free spinner at the front, but I could tension from the second disc and do the thing I just said, the non-zero tension trick. But then not only would I need to drive it with the picking tip, I'd need to adjust two discs at the front and drive it with the picking tip and overcome that spring, which I don't think would work. So, how do we pick this lock? I actually presumed Abloy would make the change of moving to a randomised zero disc when I released that tool a long time ago. Now this is something that I do, I won't put a tool onto YouTube or make something publicly available unless I've already got the next thing ready to go. So I presumed Abloy were going to change to a randomised zero disc, and which meant I'd got this tool, which was all designed up and ready to go, well maybe five years ago now, six years ago. So this allows you to tension the lock from any disc, front, rear or anywhere in the middle. So you've got a picking tip either side of your um, your tensioner. But Abloy never actually did this, so it rendered this useless. And so when I saw this tow cars Pluto come along, I was like, yes, I can finally make that tool I designed ages ago. Now, as I've already said, I won't put something on YouTube unless I already have the next best thing designed. So if you think, oh, I'll just make um, a lock that's got an even stronger spring which beats this or, or whatever, then... I've got a better way to open these now, um, so you know, don't get too excited, otherwise I wouldn't be making it public. So, I have picked this lock a few times, and this tensioner here is plenty strong enough to overcome the spring, um, which I can show you here. Get it in the lock. So, you see I'm overcoming the spring tension there, but rather than constantly keep the spring pressure on, there is something else we can do. I'm going to use a bit of cloth because this was lent to me very kindly by Lock Noob. And um, I don't want to scratch up his lock. But what you do is you apply tension and then you push the shackle and the body of the padlock away from each other. This has the effect then of tensioning the discs. So at this point I wouldn't need uh, a tensioner at all. I could just use a manipulator and go in and pick the lock. So now I'm applying tension using the screwdriver essentially. You can 
making some big clicks there, so making decent progress. This was actually a good stab at making a good lock from Tokos. Tokos do some decent stuff, I've got to say. That feels close to opening already. Now I can disassemble this lock, I think, anyway, um, I've disassembled it as much as I'm comfortable doing with a lock that doesn't belong to me, I think maybe I've got to take some pins out or something to show you the discs, uh, so I'm not going to do it because it's not mine, but I can tell you that it doesn't have false gates and that the anti-pick comes from the fact you've got this strong spring and the fact that it's a randomised zero disc. I say I've got a better way to open these locks. I've got several better ways to open these locks now. Um, so, anyway, that was the Abloy Classic knockoff three in one picking a Tokos Pluto something. Where's the box? I've got the box for it here. The Tokos Pluto, yeah, three out of three security. Look at that. So um, anyway, there we go. What well, does that mean? You get three keys with it. I don't know what that means. You do get three keys with it as it happens. But um, yeah, whatever. Finn.